Well, for example, problem number two, we have to shift gears a little bit. This one's going to be a little different. Yeah, while it's free, let's remind ourselves of this problem. Example problem number two. Again, this was used for lab number one. We're going to use it again in lab number two. We're going to solve the problem using a stereo net. In this case, we have two apparent dips, right? They're given here, 16175 and 22048. What we need to do is to determine the true strike and dip of the surface. And it's schematically illustrated right here. Two apparent dips, 22 degrees off in this direction, 048. And this one is 16 degrees off in this direction, 175, almost due south. All right, well, let's do it. So let me go ahead and put my overlay on the stereo net. As before, I'll mark north. As before, I'll trace my primitive great circle. All right, with my overlay back in position north, let me put my two compass directions, right? The given compass directions are 048, that's right here, 048, and 175, that's 17245, right there. I'll just label it this way, 175. So what we're given are these vertical angles, these apparent dips. In the direction 0, 4, 8, the apparent dip is 22 degrees, right? In the direction 175, the apparent dip is 16 degrees. I'm going to bring 0, 4, 8 down to the east-west axis, and I'm going to count the vertical angle. For that one, it is 22 degrees, 10, 22. That is 22 degrees in the direction 048. The other one, 175 and 16. So it's 16 degrees in this direction. 10, 16 degrees right there. All right. So you know that a line can be fit to any two points, right? You probably heard that in terms of graphing something, right? You have two points on a graph. You can always fit a line to two points rather perfectly. In this case, we have two lines. Two lines in space, right? You can always fit a plane to those two lines, at least in terms of their orientation. So what I've done now is I've set up example problem number two in my hemisphere model. So the blue line here is the apparent dip of um, 22 degrees in the direction 0, 4, 8. So that should point toward 0, 4, 8. And you should realize that there's a vertical angle of 22 degrees right here. The red one should point toward 175. And if it's a little off, just be understanding. It's a little hard to set this up. So it should ideally point toward 175. And this vertical angle right here should be, what, 16 degrees for the example problem. When we rotate our overlay on the stereo net, we are rotating this counterclockwise until the strike line of the resulting plane is on the north axis, and we're finding the great circle that fits those two, those two lines, really. At one point, I think I suggested that just as you can fit a line to two points on a graph, invariably, right, any two points on a graph, you can always fit a line to it. Well, it's also true that any two lines in space, you can always fit a plane to it. So that is really what we do when we find the great circle that fits these two lines, these two apparent dips. And I'm going to try to simulate that by simply 
dropping this plane in on that. And there you go. So this is now the plane that is fit to those two apparent dips. That plane right, should strike at 0, 0,16 and it dips 38 degrees to the southeast. I'm not quite sure it looks perfectly like that, but ideally that would be the case. All right. So again, all we've done is we have fit a plane to the two apparent dips. We have their orientations marked. Now it's simply a matter of fitting a plane to those two lines. And that plane is going to be, all I'm going to do here is find the great circle. And you'll notice what, I'm do what I've done. I've established that here's, here's a bold great circle right here, right? And my two dots are just off of it. In fact, I would say my two dots are on this one that corresponds to uh, 10, 20, 30, to about a 38 degree dip or so. 37, 38 degrees, something like that. So that is the great circle that fits these two dots, that fits these two, these are really lines in space, right? representing those two apparent dips. And I just established what plane fits those two dots. All right. And that's going to be this plane right here. The dip of that plane, that is, while I'm in this position, it would make sense to establish the dip of that plane. Again, it's 10, 20, 30, I'm going to call it 38 degrees. It's 37 or 38 degrees, but uh, 38. The strike of that plane then is given by that tick, but I have to rotate this in order to get a compass direction back out of this thing. I need to rotate it like that, and I find that it is 12, 14, 16 degrees. So the answer to this problem, the strike and dip, and as right arm rule, let me go back up here. If I face that direction of 0, 1, 6, my right arm will point in the direction that this plane dips to the southeast, right? So, by right arm rule, this would be expressed 0, 1, 6, 38, 3, 8. I'll remind you, the leading zero is to preserve the fact that this is a three-digit number, really, and that is an azimuth. The dip is only two digits. It, it, it has to be between zero degrees, that would be zero, zero degrees, right, to indicate the two digits. Um, but it has to be between zero, zero and nine, zero. Those are the only possibilities. The only possibilities consist of two digits. So I am showing it as a two-digit number. In terms of azimuth, again, that could consist of three digits. To preserve that, I put a leading zero right here, right, to make it three digits. 01638. All right. Well, that was pretty easy. Much easier than the orthographic construction.